right. So today I wanted us to speak about something. I I was uh reading something this morning and uh they were speaking about how uh we the conversation was about how one can still be a leader today, even with like the how can I say, even with like the so much competition um in the world right now, how can one still be a leader? So it could be whether it's like in your profession or like let's say whether it's like in business. So giving an example, let's say like if someone has like um let's say let me give a random example, like someone has like a cosmetic uh business, you know, there are so many other people who are doing that and everyone is maybe advertising and doing different things to make sure that they get clients and things like that. Yeah. So um yeah, so how do you guys think that um somebody or a business, uh, this business can be able to still lead even in a place where uh, there's a lot of competition over the other people who are doing this, the exact uh, same thing. What are maybe those things that, you know, you can do that can uh, set you apart in a way? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm seeing two, uh, okay, two, 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 sentence, two sentences there. He, he talks about hyper competition mm -hmm. and then of course um, professional professionalism what i would say somebody uh, described um quality i don't remember the the or the, the origin of this one he says quality is what the customer wants mm -hmm. yeah so as the competition arises when we continue to provide what the customer wants then we are going to be relevant because we are at the heart of uh, the customer need. And therefore, we are innovating and um, changing the ways and uh, relating to customers in which they need. And therefore, they will, they will, we're even going, going ahead. Uh, that's why when you look at all these, uh, compete, uh, these people who come in with products, they, they go ahead of um of knowing what the customer might likely uh, want and therefore whatever new i will use the app as an example whatever iphone comes on a new one people will go for it because initially um the the founder of this felt uh, uh took the customers on board and it was at the center of everything that he wanted to do it was at the heart of that yeah so once we are in there then that, that, that that's when we can become uh, I, I, like, I don't like the word competition when we create then we don't compete uh obviously competition means i want to to overtake the other person but actually once you provide what the customer want then you are not competing with any other person yeah uh, the, the, the perhaps the the, the danger is the, looking at what uh, the other um, person in the industry is doing, and then I want to perhaps imitate or to overtake them. And therefore I even leave, I'm not myself. And then I'm always uh, on the back foot of the, of, the, of the other people in the industry. But uh, once we study, once we, we engage, I think that is where, the, uh, that's the heart of the matter really. Then in terms of profession, then it's just study. We have to keep studying, keep studying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep studying. Um, we shouldn't forget, we shouldn't uh, stop doing it. In fact, in our profession, there is what we call continuous professional development. Because we, 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 we are beings who can forget things or who can, in fact, again, the, this is a biological fact. It says what you don't use you lose what you don't yeah. use lose. yeah i think what you, no, no biological fact is that if the, you've, you've got an organ and it's not used um it came across the actually the, the guy is called lamek he was explaining uh, the fact that uh, at one time we had tails but then when we started to walk on tools you may believe it or not but this is evolutionary evolution anyway 
<laughs> when we, we started moving on tools, we didn't have any need for a tail, and so our tail receded. And we don't know. We no longer have that long tail which we we, we used to have. Again, uh, however, the principle there is that if we don't use something, we then lose it. We don't use it. We don't lose, we use it. So, uh, if that can be helpful, uh, and last but not least, is the fact that we should do. We should always close that gap between what we know and what we do. In most cases, we are where we are because there is that gap. We may know something. But then what we are doing is something different. We may know the customer wants this, but then we are doing something different. And therefore, we will be out-competed or we will be where we are. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, James. Yeah. All right. For me, for me what I think about this is uh, when it comes to being able to stay in the lead, um, I think it's really about uh going the extra mile and like what james was saying that you see when you when like the iphones came in, in took clay that you know it was a different kind of phone from what people were uh originally used to yeah so i think um having that mind to go the extra mile you know when you have clients i feel like it's very important um, there's something that you know we always talk about here at Morocco saying that we want to leave everyone with an impression of increase yeah so I believe that that thing of just being able to uh to go an extra mile you know for your clients yeah I don't know if you ever like let's say uh, bought something and then um maybe like uh the person mm -hmm. you're buying from let's say you're getting something and they'll give you like candy, like as an extra thing, or they'll give you something extra, or they'll put there like a note in like the package that you bought, or they'll like something to just go the extra mile. Like they're not just giving you the package and that's that, but they're trying to um to sort of like go an extra mile to be able to maintain uh like the client. Yeah. So for me, that's what I think that the fact that there is so much competition, just being able to go that extra mile to think um, outside the box in a way that you can be able to serve your client, you know, just having that question of what can be, what can we be able to do more? What can we be able to do more? How can we be able to serve our clients uh, better? How can we be able to make our service more convenient, yeah, for the people who are serving? You know, that's something that we are, you know, need to be thinking about. It's just like, you know, the time when, um, when COVID came and everybody was at home. Yeah, so, you know, there's some people who had already taken their businesses online because, you know, they were thinking of ways they could make shopping uh, more convenient, I mean, more convenient for their clients. And then the people who had not yet put their businesses online, you know, they were still thinking of uh, people have to come into the shop and buy items, yeah. But there are people who had already made it convenient for their clients to just order something online and maybe get fresh food delivered and things like that. And, you know, those are the businesses that really thrived uh, during that season, you know, because they had kind of thought the extra mile that, you know, maybe if somebody that I want to come to the store, uh, they can order, yeah. But uh, for people who are always thinking that, you know, people will always come to the store, then, you know, the business kind of uh, lost out in the competition. So for me, I feel like it's, you know, uh, going the extra mile, taking time to think outside the box, how you can be able to improve um, your service and not just getting comfortable with doing the same thing um, every other day or every other year, like getting some moments, you know, maybe if it's like every quarter or every um or every end of year, you know, just to think maybe how can we be able to do things in a different way? Yeah, I think like that really, that really helps. Yeah, because, you know, the world keeps on changing every every other day and clients or customers are always looking for the most convenient way to do things for the fastest way to do things. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, anyone else can feel free to share. Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, two things uh, came to my mind about this uh, subject. Uh, one of them is that, uh, I think James uh, mentioned it uh, too, that uh, when uh, you, you, uh, your 
product or your service is a uh, high quality and uh, you are uh, you are doing the best uh, in the market uh, automatically uh, you you are uh, better than uh, your competitor because uh, because people always look for um, quality uh, and after uh, they uh, used your product or your, your service uh, and uh, they knew that uh, your product uh, has the best uh, quality that is available in the market. Uh, they uh, always came back to you. They always look forward to your new services, to your new products. So uh, quality is always uh, the key to success, I think. Uh, not even uh, in uh, job uh, even in, in our personal life. Uh, and uh, yeah, when you uh, do something that in the best way that is possible, it always pays off. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, for example, uh, be in, because uh, sometimes uh, why why iPhone and uh, all Apple products are uh, mo most of the time they are the most expensive uh, product that is in the market. Uh, but I think the reason uh, behind that is because they use they always use high quality uh, material, uh, and um, I think the key to success for um, companies and companies who are producing something or who are providing a service is that uh, to make um, the price uh, lower and uh, you know they shouldn't uh, they shouldn't um, and they shouldn't uh, produce uh, something with low uh, quality and uh, i think this is something important and uh, one other thing uh, is that we always, uh, as as a company, I think that the company always needs to be connected uh, to their uh, clients. Uh, all they there shouldn't be a gap between them, and uh, all, always they should they should be in touch because you always want to know uh, about uh, your clients' needs, and you should always be updated about uh, this matter because uh, because. Uh, because when you are in touch with your client they uh, you they give you feedback and uh, they give you comments about your uh, product about your service you can always know that uh, you are close to them and you know what they need so uh, you uh, take some steps or ch or even change what you are doing uh, to the thing that they need and i think this is really important uh, giving um, taking feedbacks from uh, clients I think this is uh, very important because uh, you are doing something for uh, your client and uh, even if maybe you make something and you think that that is uh, good but uh, e when when you put it in the market and uh, your clients use it, uh, you, uh, you realize that it has uh, some problems that need to be fixed and uh, it, it needs to be fixed and um, so clients can use it better. Yeah, I think these two things, uh, quality and uh, be in touch with uh, clients uh, it can be helpful to uh be uh, the leader in your uh, market yeah thank you so much Terry. yeah and like what you said uh, about uh, customer feedback or client feedback you know it's very important to be able to know how uh you know the feedback that people are giving you about what you what you've created yeah there's something usually when people are creating softwares for like different um companies you know though before it's actually rolled out they'll first get like a sample space of people to um you know to test out uh to test out the software see if it's working and i think i've also seen even instagram 
I, I don't know about other social media platform, but even Instagram does this. Like, when they release like a new feature, they'll give it to like some influencers or some users to try out the feature and give them feedback before it's rolled out to everyone. Yeah, so uh, that's a very important factor to know that you're creating for people. So you need to actually know what they think about what you're creating. Yeah, thank you so much. Um. Yeah. Yes. Uh. No. Please share something in this. Oh. Okay. Um. So, you say how can you lead your industry despite the winning the competition? Okay. Um. For me, I just believe that if you want to stand out or you want in your industry, you just need to have um a vision. First of all, you should have a vision. Yeah, as an individual or and of what you want to achieve because you can't keep doing um the same thing each and every day for quite a good number of time. Like um I don't know if you are one that measured okay, you, you measured about business, like for instance, when during the COVID nineteen businesses transmit and transmit themselves online, like just like how we are doing here at Mobile. For me to be in Sierra Leone and then working for a company in UK and here in Uganda and Saturday out there working for a company, it means that Moeko Limited has just stand out of the crowd. Yeah, because several people want to do this or they want they they were all embarking on the same um um same um accountancy stuff, but because of the idea was not was not there, or they have they they did not they did not have the vision because the last time when I had, Molly was telling us that it was um, he thought about going paperless about twenty um about twelve years ago. Imagine that's that's a very long time, because he wanted to stand out of the crowd. That's that's where it, it's a vision because he believes that if that's the only way it can it can be it can be um. It can be relevant to the profession. Quite a good number of um SMEs during that time they closed their organizations. Yeah, they, they shut down because of the the idea was not there for them to yeah. go online. So that's a that's a way of trying to be relevant in, in your profession or in a business. Yeah. So go again, you measured about some features like the iPhone, the Apple. Whenever you see they are they, these are all the same, you see each and every year or about six months they will just launch a product saying mm -hmm. oh this is I no max mm -hmm. this is if you take a look the iPhone um the iPhone six or iPhone seven can do call everything yeah it can take pictures but they have a certain features that they will add into any of their products for it to stand out to make the older ones absolute. So if you don't have that feature in in, in your in your iPhone, you will have that, that you you will be you want to go out there again to purchase the, the the recent version of the iPhone. So that's how also they are trying to leave their 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 competitors. They create each and every month. They try to do things that are not in the market. They will do a survey after doing their survey and then launch a product a product that will stand out so if you for now if you hear about anybody that you see with an iphone 14 go max or so you know that oh these are top these they are using the most recent but no the, all the functions are the same but just like they they, they, they might just have a one or two features for them to be better or stand out of the others so, okay thank you linda Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Noah. All right. All right, guys, we'll just close our meeting uh, for today.